Last Sunday, you know, I had to go to Enugu to do an official handover. Amen. So we are fully here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Um, and um, I want to specially welcome my dear wife. Yeah. Come to Amen. Join us. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, the last five months has been tough. It's been very, very tough. All the while we've been married, we've been together. You know, but for the last five months, it's been tough. And, um, you know, only God knows what she went through. Amen. But I'm glad to have her, and she's glad to have me. Can we appreciate Pastor? Welcome. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the kids are in children's church, so we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now she's there, my anointing has, yeah. has completed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's lift up our hands and just appreciate the Lord this morning. What an awesome time to be in the presence of the Lord. Just thank Him. Just go ahead and thank Him. Let's go ahead and thank him. I want to talk to us about words. Words. Amen. Words. Words. Hallelujah. Okay. Using your words to shape your relationship, to shape your marriage. Your words. The words that you speak. The words that come out of your mouth. Amen. You know, and um, I want to start by saying that the heart of every relationship, every marriage, is words. Words. Hallelujah. Okay, how do you, you know, how do you woo a woman? How do you chike a woman? How do you chase a woman? Someone say words. How do you propose? Huh? Words. How do you get married? How do you make the marriage vows? Words. Amen. So, relationship is about words. Marriage is about words. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? It's words that start it and it's words that sustain it. And guess what? It's words that destroy it. It's words that destroy it. Hallelujah. You know, the temperature, the love temperature of every marriage, the love temperature of every you know, relationship is regulated by the words that are being spoken in that marriage, the words that are being spoken in that relationship. Am I communicating? If the love temperature is going to be high, it's because kind words are being spoken. Am I communicating? Loving words are being spoken. Praise the Lord. If the temperature is low, there is tension everywhere. It's because unkind words are being spoken. Hurtful words are being spoken. Am I communicating? You know, sometimes what people don't realize is that words are spirits. Jesus said the words I speak unto you, they are what? They are spirit and they are what? And they are life. And words hang in the air. Sometimes when you step into a home where people have spoken unkind words, it hangs in the atmosphere. Sometimes they can be pretending that everything is okay because pastor has walked in. Amen. But if you check the atmosphere, you know that words are hanging in that home. Some things have been spoken that shouldn't have been spoken. Am I communicating? So, 
By your words, you can make your home in your heaven. By your words, you can make it hell. And by your words, you can make it purgatory. If there's anything like that, can I hear an amen? Okay, First Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. Verse 10. So, let's start from there. Okay. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. Want to go. For he that will love what? Life. And see good days. Okay. So he that will love life. He that will enjoy life. And see good days in his marriage. In his relationship. Okay. Let him do what? Refrain his tongue from what? From evil. His tongue from speaking negative things. His tongue from speaking unkind words. Amen. And his lips that they speak what? They speak no guile. That one has to do with deceit and all of that. Let me see verse 11. Let me see verse 11. Okay, can we continue? Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him what? Seek peace and ensure it. Ensue it. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Okay, James chapter 3. And verse 2. James chapter 3 and verse 2. You know, it's a whole long chapter. So I'll see the ones who will jump. Are you there? Okay, we can read one to go. Is what? Is a perfect man. Another word for it is a matured man. Is a spiritual man. Is a spiritual man. So how do you know a spiritual man? Is words. If it, if if a man does not offend the word, you don't know a spiritual man by the way he says his face. Amen. You don't know a spiritual man by the size of his Bible. You don't know a spiritual man. By his car sticker. Am I communicating? You know a spiritual man when he what? He talks. When he talks. For out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? The mouth speaketh. Your mouth reflects your heart. Your mouth reflects the state of your human spirit. The state of your spiritual development. Am I communicating? Okay, let's continue. Now, um... You know, let's jump to verse 5. Let's jump to verse 5. Are you there? Want to go? Even so, the tongue is a little member. Tell somebody your tongue is a little member. Uh huh. And boasted what? Great things. I mean, this tongue is very small, but it can do wonders. Both positively and negatively, if you allow it. It can do wonders. Uh huh. Behold, how great a matter a little fire what? Somehow, just small fire that you create can burn down this whole house. Do you know sometimes just few words that we are spoken can wreck can wreck a whole marriage. Few words can wreck a whole relationship, and that's the truth. Now, verse 6. You might not believe it all, but this is the Bible. Can we read verse 6 together? I want to go. And the tongue is a fire. Tell somebody your tongue is a fire. Not Holy Ghost fire. Your tongue is a fire. Not Holy Ghost fire. Please tell the person, therefore don't fire it at people. Okay. Where are we? A word of what? Iniquity. Now this is God describing your tongue. You know, I actually wrote it beside my note. I say from now on, fear your tongue. Tell somebody, fear your tongue. You need to fear your tongue. I fear my tongue. Sometimes what my tongue wants to say, if I allow it to say it, 
it can destroy people. I'm coming. Uh huh. So is the tongue among our members, and it defileth what? The whole body, and set it on fire, the cause of what? Of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Verse 7 For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and has been tamed of mankind. Of course, men have even tamed lions. Amen. Even some people have tamed, praise Lord, snakes. You see a snake, he's tamed. They are stopped biting. And that is Shawama. Because he has been trained. <laughs> Am I communicating? Okay. But the tongue. Now verse 8. But the tongue can no man what? Tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly. Is that in your Bible? Full of deadly poison. Is as poisonous as a viper. Verse 9. Therewith, bless we God, even the Father. And therewith, with the same tongue, cause we men which are made afterward the similitude of God. An example, some of us have come into the service now, the worship is going on, we are blessing God. Lord, I bless you. Da, 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 Then the next thing, you leave. You enter traffic, somebody blocks you. You say, shake it there. <laughs> now, with the same tongue, that you just finished blessing God, you have already cursed a human being. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceeded what? Blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Verse 11. Thus a fountain set forth at the same place sweet water and bitter water. No. Hallelujah. Now, let me jump to verse 13. He said, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good word, conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 31, verse 26. I'm trying to lay a foundation. So, you know, how do you know a perfect man? He does not offend the word. How do you know a virtuous woman? Let me also show you the virtuous woman. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 26. Are you there? Can we do it together? I want to go. Now, Proverbs 31 is about a virtuous woman. Uh -huh. She opened her mouth with what? With wisdom. With wisdom. And in her tongue is what? Is the law of kindness. So how do, you, how do I know a virtuous woman? When she talks, when she opens her mouth, what comes out of her mouth tells me if she's a virtuous woman or not. Am I communicating? So with our words, we can build our relationships and our marriages, even our friendships, and with our words, we can destroy them. We can destroy them. So there is a positive use of words, and there is a negative use of words. So I came this morning to help you to see how to start using words positively so that you can stop using the word negatively. And it can change your whole marriage. It can change your whole relationship. It can change your whole friendship. It can change everything. Am I communicating? And I want to say, it, when man fell, the thing that fell the most was his tongue. When man fell, the tongue fell flat. Praise the Lord. And um, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to say negative things than to say positive things. It's easier to criticize than to compliment. Amen? It's easier to find faults than to find um, virtue. It's the cause of the fallen man. Now we are born again. Okay? We are born again. We are, you know, we are being recreated. And God now expects something to happen to our tongue. 
The Bible says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Now, people have presented their whole body and kept their tongue out. God wants your tongue on the altar. Tell somebody what I said. God wants your tongue on the altar. He wants your tongue on the altar. He wants a surrendered tongue that he can use to say the things that he wants to say. Praise the Lord. Okay, so let's start with the positive ones. Let me share with you the words that build relationships, that build marriages. These are the words that God wants us to be speaking. Number one, the first one is romantic words. Romantic words. Amen? If that marriage is going to keep working, if that relationship is going to keep working, and you're going to still be sweethearts, then romantic words must be spoken in that relationship. Romantic words must be spoken in that marriage. Am I communicating? The amazing is that sometimes, especially the men, while we are chasing the women, we tell them all the sweet stuff. We tell them all the raps. When we finally marry them, amen, that is when the rap stops. But according to the Bible, that is when the rap should now start. After you get married, you should become, you should become a rapper. It should become a two-pack. It should become a 50 cent. <laughs> Am I communicating? All those wonderful things you used to say, this is now the time to change to gear four and start saying it. But that is when people stop. I told you the story of a woman that um, filed for divorce in America. And the judge said, why do you want a divorce? And the woman said, because my husband does not love me. Amen. And, and the man heard it. And the man said, how can you say, I don't love you? The woman said, because you don't tell me. The man said, but I told you the day I married you that I will always love you. The woman said, how long ago was that? Twelve years ago. Twelve years. So, so that woman is supposed to be sustained by that I love you that was spoken twelve years ago. Amen. If you're still beside the man, tell the man you must become a rapper now that you're married. Okay, okay, not everybody is married. Amen. All those wonderful things. I love you. You're dear to me. You know, you're the sweetest thing. You're the best. That, 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 that. You know, you know, some of you are, are better than me in those things. You have gone far. <laughs> you know, for the point is, you know, you have to be committed to it. It's those words. As those words are being spoken, it regulates the temperature of a marriage. It regulates the temperature of in a relationship. Am I communicating? Sometimes it can be sent in form of text messages. Sometimes it can be sent in form of BB chats. Sometimes it can be okay sent in form of notes. You can just drop a note. Sometimes it could be a card. You know that is communicating what you have in your heart. Am I communicating? If love is going to continue, then romantic words must be spoken. It must be spoken. Praise the Lord. So, that is the first way of using words to shape a marriage. And it's very, very important. Number two. Okay. The second use of words is compliments. Is compliments. Is compliments. You must learn to compliment the other person. See an example in marriage, for instance. You know, when people are married, when people are single, they dress for the public. Eh? When they get married, they dress for their husband. Or they dress for their wife. My communicating. If, if a married woman makes her hair, if everybody has said the hair is fine, it doesn't mean anything. Until she hears it, from, for, from the man she made it for. And sometimes it's the man she made it for that will not see it because he's in the spirit. <laughs> Am I complicated? He's in the spirit. He's seeing God and the angels and sometimes some demons. But he will not see the hair to compliment the hair. Am I complicated? Am I complicated? It's the same thing with everything. Wow, you look great. Wow, you look beautiful. 
while your figure is something else, then the human will keep jogging to maintain the figure. Am I coming? She feels encouraged. But you keep quiet. You don't say anything about the figure. The things that are seen are temporary. So the figure will start disfiguring quietly until it becomes 8,888. And you start complaining about what has disfigured, but you are not complimenting the figure. Can I hear an amen? amen. Tell somebody, learn to compliment. Even if you're single. Even if you're single. And sometimes you can be passing a sister. You say, wow, nice hair. Nice hair. Nice hair. And sometimes it might be seeds you'll be sowing so that when you now package the proposal, it will be accepted. <laughs> My communicating. Nice combination. Wow, you look good. Amen. Then even men also need to be complimented. Yeah, nice tie. Wow, nice shirt. Sometimes you you know look at your husband. Handsome bobo. <laughs> An example, my wife calls me handsome. I didn't know until she started calling me. And I checked myself in the mirror. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Tell somebody learn to compliment. You know, sometimes it's food. The woman finishes cooking. You say, Wow, fantastic meal. Fantastic. Fantastic. Don't just finish the food and no. You didn't go to Mama Put. You didn't go to Mama Put. Where you can finish and pay money. The money is the compliment. Compliment the food. Compliment this, compliment that, compliment that, and praise the Lord. It helps to build a marriage. It helps to build a relationship. Okay? Number three. The third one is courteous words. Words that are courteous. The words that you speak. Okay? First Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. I want to show you courtesy in the Bible. You know, people don't believe that, you know, that that kind of thing can even appear in the Bible. I want to show you. Are you there? Okay, go to verse 7 so I can show you that he's even talking to married people. Verse 7. Okay, likewise, you husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not what? Hindered. Okay, verse 8. Can we read together? I want to go. Finally, be ye all of one mind. Having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, and be what? And be courteous. And be courteous. And be courteous. You can say, Please, honey, please, can I have that cup? You don't just sit there. Get me that cup. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Your wife. Get me that cup. Amen. Sweetie, please come. Another person will say, Hey, hey, come. <laughs> Somebody say, Hey. <laughs> Who are you calling? Hey. Your fiancé. Most times it's men that do it. They say, Hey. Amen. I remember years ago I used to do it. Not hey, oh. I used to say in Igbo. You know, but it's come. That's the way they say it in Igbo. And one day she was telling me, he said, he said, sweetie, this, you know, can't call me. Amen. You know how they say it in Igbo? <laughs> so I will say it like that. <laughs> she say it. No, we don't speak Igbo in this church. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. And I realized that what I was doing was wrong, and it was not courteous. It wasn't courteous at all. Amen. Sometimes it's please, please. Amen. Please help me with. Please get so so and so for me. You know, you speak to the person 
with respect. You speak to the person with tenderness. Amen? An example, you cook for your husband. You just enter. Food is ready. Even if his mama put where the right food is ready. Your food is on the dining. <laughs> no. No. Love, your food is ready. Put something before the statement. Something that will melt the person. Something that is nice to hear. Am I communicating? Be courteous. Be courteous. Just because I'm dealing with words, so I'm leaving it with words. But courtesy, you know, I can use several things to explain it. But the Bible wants us to be courteous. Be nice. Number four. The fourth positive way of using words to build a marriage, to build a relationship, is praise. Is praise. Praise. Praise your spouse. Am I communicating? Praise your spouse. You know, sometimes I tell the person, wow, you're the best. If he has one name he likes, you know, you use the name. Maybe he pays the children's school fees and, and he's chairman. He says, chairman, hey, you're the best. If there's reincarnation, I will marry you again. And you see the man. The Bible says God is fearful in praises. And men are created in the image and likeness of God. So men are also fearful in praises. When you praise a man, he wants to do more. He wants to do more. You know, sometimes I finish doing something at home. And she will start praising me, praise me, praise me. I'll be saying in my heart, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Wait until I do the next one. Amen. You don't get a man to do something by holding him on the trouser and suspending his trouser until he becomes Michael Jackson and his white stockings is showing. No. Praise the man. Praise the man. And that's how some people will have a wife. You know, and the wife will always be complaining and be nagging. And they go and find one small girl that will be healing them. And be ministering to them. And they will be supplying the money there. Now it's not right. A Christian man should not do that. Okay? But sometimes that's what happens. And the man will say, be going from prayer house to prayer house. They are giving my husband love portion. It's not love portion. It's praise portion. That you that have the man in the house should have been given to him. Why do you think men collect chief fancy title? It's because men love praise. An example, you see some men, you see the amount of titles. And that's how God is. See Jesus Christ. See the amount of titles. Lord of lords. King of kings. Bright and morning star. Lion of Judah. Ancient of days. You know, ancient of everything. You know, all kind of title. The Bible says when you get to heaven, he wears many crowns. And so that when people are worshipping him, majesty, kabiesi, and the thing, God will be doing like this. He say, give it to me. Amen. Then he starts displaying his power. Starts displaying his kindness. Starts, you know, displaying his goodness. He created men like that too. If your husband has a chief dancing title, sometimes call him by his chief dancing title. And his head will be swelling. <laughs> Am I communicating? Let's learn to use what? Praise. Let's learn to use praise. Let's learn to use praise. And even a man should also praise a woman. Praise her cooking. Praise different things. Number five. Number five. You know? The fifth positive way is appreciation appreciation in this one you appreciate the things that he does amen you appreciate it thank you thank you learn to you know small small words see that word thank you you know it's just praise lord thank you know and you but a lot of people find it hard to say I cannot remember eating food in my house and I did not say thank you at the end of the meal. Amen? 
most times why people don't say thank you is that they feel that this is your your duty this is what you're supposed to do so why should i thank you you are an unprofitable servant after you have done those things which are commanded to do say i am an unprofitable servant so you have an unprofitable wife who now sees cooking as a burden who sees cooking for you you know as a duty and as a burden there is no more joy you know but when the person knows that you will appreciate this thing you know my husband will say thank you you know sometimes you know you say the thank you with emotions you can just say thank you and be watching my you and that person you know looks at her he say honey thank you thank you you know that one carries carries anointing amen it does what it carries anointing thank you praise lord i appreciate it's the same thing when a man pays house rent you don't say it's his responsibility after all when i was in my father's house my father was paying house rent so if you brought me here shouldn't you pay the rent amen you're supposed to appreciate him for the rent thank you thank you for paying the house rent honey thank you for paying school fees for the children amen it's not my mind as far as school fees in this lagos an example when we were in Enugu, the school fees of our children was thirty-five thousand. Thirty-five, and it's the best school in Enugu, one of the best in Enugu. Thirty-five thousand. When we got one here, they gave us bill two hundred and fifty thousand for one child. I remembered family planning. <laughs> Remember family planning. If you don't know family planning, come to Lagos. You will know family planning by force. <laughs> Am I complicated? Because it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. So you now pay for three kids. They are giving you somewhere around 50, somewhere around something thousand. Something I used to pay 100,000 for three. I'm breaking. Why did they increase the fees? I don't understand this school. <laughs> Amen. So the man pays it. Wow. You thank him. Then too, when it's, you know, it's a family where it's combination, the woman contributes and all that, you also thank her. You also thank her. You know, bring your own. Oh yeah. Report it. I'm the man. Then the next time, it will be a burden to her to be a burden. Appreciate her contribution. Thank you for joining in paying for the rent. Thank you for joining in doing this, doing that, doing that, doing that. Am I communicating? Thank her. Then the team leaves the load. The person will not feel as though he or she is doing a duty. All these little things. The Bible talks about the little foxes that spoil the vine. There are also little fo foxes that make the vine. There are little things you know, that make the vine sweet. And these are the stop number six the sixth one is apology apology what did i say apology offering an apology an example you know you realize that you did something wrong simple i am sorry very short word a lot of people have used Close up to brush it out of their mouth. It cannot be found there. They can never say, I am sorry. Their shoulder pad is very high. They say, we'll see you. We'll see who will say sorry. And sometimes, three months, a couple are not in talking terms. They are fighting over who will say sorry. I will never be the one. This one will say, I'll never be the one. Never be the one. Three months. And those three months, all the benefits of the kingdom, they are not enjoying it. Three months, sex that god gave to you you can't enjoy it because you're carrying shoulder pad. i will never say i am sorry a christian should be quick to say that he's sorry apologize according to the bible the bible says blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called what 
the children of God, people that seek reconciliation, then I can also flip it. Blessed are the troublemakers, for they shall be called eh? children of the devil. Please ask somebody for me. Are you a peacemaker? Are you a troublemaker? Which one are you? A Christian should be a peacemaker. A Christian should be seeking reconciliation. So, you realize that you're wrong. Say, I'm sorry. Even sometimes, 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 you even realize, you know, maybe you're not the one that is wrong and the other person is the one that is wrong. The person refuses to accept. You can also go and, praise Lord, apologize. I tell people that marriage is not 50-50. The reason why a lot of marriages have problems is that they run it 50-50. You contribute 50, I contribute 50. No, sometimes marriage can be 70-30. Sometimes marriage can be, um, it can even be 10-90. It's one person that is showing more love, showing more endurance and all that. But as you keep practicing it before the other person, it starts catching the person's attention and the person starts growing and getting to your level. Am I communicating? I don't know if you have heard the story of Joyce Meyer. You know, when she got newly married to the husband. That her husband, you see, she showed the man pepper, pepper, yellow pepper, red pepper, brown pepper, all kind of pepper. And he was the man that was literally carrying that marriage. And that's why today, that woman does not play with that man. Doesn't. Now, God has finally caught her attention that, that, that all her rejection problem has been dealt with. And... She loves the man like no man's business. But he was the man before. So if you just say, no, I'm not the one that is wrong. I can never apologize for what I did not do. Then you don't know Christianity. You've not met Jesus Christ. You've not met him. Okay, let me show you. First Peter chapter 2. Should I, let's let's start from verse 19. Let me try. First Peter chapter 2. Please, can you hurry? I have a lot of things to stay handle. Okay, verse 18. Verse 18. Okay. Now, can we read together? I want to go. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the what? The forward. Forward means harsh. Verse 19. For this is what? Is thankworthy. If a man, uh uh-huh, for conscience towards God endures what? Grief. Suffering what? Wrongfully. Suffering wrongfully. Suffering wrongfully. Some people don't believe in suffering wrongfully. They are freedom fighters. Mandela. No Mandela will succeed in marriage. You cannot be a human rights activist in marriage. Always fighting for your rights. I am right so nobody will hear. You will not go far in marriage. You will not go far in a relationship. Sometimes you have to suffer wrongfully and just accept it so that peace will reign because the peace of that marriage is more important than you being right or wrong. The peace of that relationship is more important than you being right or wrong. This is Bible. Okay, verse 20. Let's rush. Okay, for what glory is it that that, that, um, you shall take it Okay, let's start from from the beginning. For what glory is it? Okay, when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it what? Patiently. But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with who? With God. When you do well, yet you suffer for it, you take it what? Patiently. This is acceptable with God. So you can be right and still apologize. And let me say this. Meekness is not weakness. Pastor will say that meekness is not weakness. That meekness is strength under control. It's strength under control. Verse 21. Now here, you can see that the Bible said it's also a calling. Don't say a calling. Can we read? For even here unto where you called, because Christ also suffered, and I can add wrongfully for us, leaving us an example 
that we should follow what his steps that's why i said you have not met jesus christ you've not met christianity if you will not suffer wrongfully jesus also suffered wrongfully an example jesus was crucified for saying that he's the king of the jews do you know that jesus was born king he was from that lineage of the tribe of judah he was supposed to be the next king of israel by birth by birth that's what they killed him for for saying that he's the king of the jews and of a truth he's the king of the jews that's what they killed him for okay let's finish it verse 22 you know who did no sin neither was what guy found in his mouth verse 23 who when he was revived revived not again while he was hanging on the court people will insult him he did not insult back no insult back he say you are an arm robber he say you you're a bigger arm robber from the cross he didn't reply one person uh-huh when he suffered he what he threatened not he say wait say you're slapping me when i rise from the dead when I rise from the dead, I will visit your house first and I will show you. But committed himself to him that judged what? Righteously. Okay? Wow, I spent a lot of time on this sixth one. Number seven. Let me see if I can end with this for this. The seventh one is encouragement. 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 That is the next way to use words. Okay? You have to learn to encourage your spouse, encourage your fiance, encourage your fiance. Sometimes people go through difficult times and they come and talk to you. You know, an example: somebody loses his job, and, and what the person needs is encouragement. Is encouragement. And you, you just look at your husband. Say you lost your job. You lost your job. You lost your job. So you came home to tell me. That you lost your job. And that's why many men, when they have issues, instead of going back home to a woman that will accept them and pamper them, they end up in beer parlor. They go and sit down. They say, Madam, give me her for happiness. <laughs> and they don't drink. drink. Meanwhile, their wife is at home. A Christian woman should be a kind of woman that no matter what a man goes through, he can come back home and find love and find encouragement and find acceptance. He lost his job. Sometimes it can even be his mistake. It's not time to start reminding him. Not time. I've been warning you. I've been warning you the way you talk to your boss. Roti me, roti me. You have finished me. That's what people will do. He has finished me. Hey. Am I communicating? Meanwhile, she just needed a woman that will listen. A woman that will encourage him. And all of that. Then there is one man too. When women are going through things, their heart is full. And they need encouragement. You know, because men are very logical. Then they allow the woman to talk. After a while, they stop you. They know where you're going. They say, okay. See, ah! It's a simple matter, simple matter. See how to. She's not looking for advice. It's not advice she's looking for. She's looking for comfort. They say when women talk, they talk from their emotions. Men talk from their mind. One day in Enugu, a woman came to my office. She had problem. And she came and sat me down. And spoke for four hours. Four. Four. And God taught me patience that day. I listened and listened. I would shake my head. I would, hey. And she kept pouring out. When she finished, she said, Pastor, I will come and go. And she stood up. I did not say anything. I didn't say anything. And she stood up and left for four hours. And I realized she did not need me to say anything. She wanted somebody that she can pour out the whole thing. four hours some men will stop you there no 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 i know how you're i know where you're going you know i'll take two here put two here put two there (laughs) 
sometimes just words of encouragement. You know, sometimes, you know, it's just to hold the woman, you know, amen, and encourage her. Can I hear an amen? And all of that. Let me mention the last one here is humor. It's humor. It's humor. That's another way you can use words. Use it to crack jokes. Joke, laugh. If you see what laughter does to a marriage, how this marriage where they are always boning. If you're going to have a happy home, then you have to laugh. You have to joke. You have to, hey, amen. Tell somebody, stop taking life too seriously. Stop taking life too seriously. Stop taking life too seriously. Amen. See an example, you go to work, the way Lagos is, you know, all the hustle and bustle, you're trying to make money, you're very serious there. Then you, you enter traffic, you're very serious in getting traffic. Then when you get home, relax your face. You now get home again. <laughs> Meanwhile, where is my food? Why did you not microwave it? Where are the children? Why did they sleep? They should come and welcome their father. Just be doing like this. How are you going to? Is that how you're going to enjoy life? It's when you get to heaven you realize what you have missed on earth. I've taken a vow in this life that I will serve God and serve Him well. Then after that, I will enjoy my life. I will enjoy my life. The Bible says, live joyfully with the wife of your youth. Joyfully. That means enjoy the wife of your youth. Enjoy your marriage. Stop squeezing your face. You're not from Libya. Stop squeezing your face. Learn to laugh. Learn to be happy. They say the joy of the Lord is what? It's my strength. Enjoy. Have fun. Let your children be happy around you. Amen? It's not once they hear you're coming home. They say, daddy, 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 daddy. They will just evaporate like gas. How can you be a dear mean? In your own house. Hallelujah. Okay. Let me go to the, the words that destroy relationship and marriage. I will just touch them fast because of my time. I have Ten more minutes. Number one. The first one. Threats. 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 Negative. Threats. You see people, they issue a threat. I will just carry my bag and walk out of this marriage. Eh? Eh? If you don't want this relationship, just get out of my life. I can't take uh -uh. Hey. It's some of those explosions that cause problems. An example, we have it as a policy. There is no issue that will bring us to the level where we are now issuing threat of working out in a marriage. Because you see, marriage is entered by words. And actually people release their faith when they get married. You know, that's why the vow will say, you know, that I release now in the name of Jesus Christ. It's your faith that you're releasing. The day you withdraw that faith in that marriage, the marriage will crumble. If you believe in your marriage, you will not be threatening each other with divorce. If you believe in that relationship, you will not be threatening each other with breakup. You will not. It's some of the things people have to decide from day one. That no, no matter what, I will not threaten you with divorce. I will not threaten you with breakup. No matter what. This is the first one. And it causes a lot of problems. You see the Bible said, when he suffered the word, he threatened not. Jesus Christ, he threatened not. Stop issuing threats. Stop issuing threats. Number two. See the second one. Name calling. Name calling. Name calling. The Bible calls it reeling. Reeling for reeling. You know, living Bible says name calling for name calling. This one says you a fool. A fool at 40. Is a fool forever. He say you a bigger fool. You a bigger fool. I don't know if you have read your Bible. He that calls his brother Raka fool is in danger of hellfire. I don't know if it's your Bible. The day I saw it, I stopped calling people fool. 
I might say, oh, why are you behaving like a foolish man? Not a marriage, oh. But to call somebody fool, you are a fool. He say you are in danger of hellfire. This one say you are a bigger fool. You are stupid. You are more stupid than your mother. If you see what people say to one another, if you hear the words, do you know if you will stop saying those things, that marriage will change. It will change. That relationship will change. Number three. The third one is harsh correction. Harsh correction. Harsh correction. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 19. And it's men that do this one. I ask you to put the house in order. What is this called doing there? Demon will be quiet. He said, my friend, answer me. Answer me. Your wife, your wife, your wife, even the worst ones of men do, a woman they've not married, they've started flaunting the authority. Mr. President, if I'm the one, I'll run away, oh. If you are issuing order like a dear mean, when you have not married me, when you now marry me, you combine a dear mean, Mugabe, Gaddafi, and Saddam Hussein. Combine. Let me show you. You know, this was the scripture that said today for me. Now watch. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Now, please, who has NIV? Who has NIV? Okay, please reach for me. Are you there? Who is there? You have an IV. Wow. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. One more time. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And do not be what? Harsh with them. Harsh. Don't be harsh with them. Someone was sharing a story. He said one day the wife called him. He said, why are you always barking at me like a dog? Have you ever told me something quietly and I didn't do? Then the man checked. And he had to start repenting. You did not marry a dog, so he can't be barking. can't be barking. In some of those things, you talk to the woman anyhow, correct thing anyhow, then crush her self-esteem, crush her confidence, then when you tell her to bring cops, you bring hanky. <laughs> Am I communicating? Amen. And let me say this boldly. You did not marry your wife to train her. You married her to love her. You married her to train her. I pray you. He married her to love her. It's even inside love that you can start bringing correction. But the correction is not harsh correction. It's a colleague you're talking to. It's a colleague, not your child. Not your child. Number four. This one has to do with women. Nagging, nagging, nagging. Nagging. What is nagging? Constant complaining. Constant complaining. You see people, they're always complaining, always complaining. You know, the man did something. They, you know, the man is back. They'll be complaining in the parlor. They will enter the kitchen. They are still complaining. They are frying plantain. Shh, complain. Shh, complain. Uh, uh, always talking, talking, talking. 30 minutes, they are talking. And, you know, the man will just go and buy earphone and be listening to music. Crucified, laid behind the stone. Somebody is in the kitchen complaining. Nagging. You will not change your husband by nagging. What nagging produces is men who don't care anymore. They don't care. They know you will complain. They are expecting the complaint. So why would they try to do anything different? When you finish, you can't, you can't do anything to me. 
to be complaining. <laughs> Nagging. Is another one. Number five. Wow. Speaking in anger. As other one. Speaking in anger. 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 Sometimes people just burst out in anger. You know, one thing about praise Lord anger is that you know anger helps you to say things you would not normally say. Anger gives you boldness to say things that you will not say under normal conditions. But go and check. In the end, you end up regretting the things you said in anger. So the Bible teaches be slow to anger. It said the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Your policy should be when you are angry, don't talk until the anger comes down. Until the anger comes down. Someone will say, hey, I will give you a piece of my mind. A piece of my mind. But that piece of your mind has chased seven men that should have married you away. I left you in pieces. I say, no, Mio, Mio, I just tell people my mind. I say, make sure the mind is renewed before you tell it. If not, it will be causing problem. I don't say my mind many times. Because when you're, you're angry, if you see the kind of things that will be going through your mind, if you say them, if you say them, how many have I mentioned? Five. Okay. The sixth one is using strong words. Using strong words. Some people always, you know, you always do it. Always. Be careful about that word. Always. 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 You can say, you can say to somebody, why do you behave like this now? Not you always behave like this. No. No. Those words are strong. And they cause problem. Once you say the person starts defending himself, he believes you are attacking him. You always do this thing. You always come back late. You always come back late to this house. In fact, today you will not enter. You must tell me where you're coming from. Always. There are nicer ways to say things. Praise the Lord. Then some is never. I will never trust you. Be careful of those words. I will never, I will never eat your food again. Hey, hey, never. Number seven. You know, some people do this rebooking your spouse publicly. Publicly. You don't correct your spouse publicly. You don't. You don't. I was with a couple somewhere once, and two of them were very fat. Very fat couple, very fat. You know, so somewhere that was with us turned to the man. He said, Now, why are you adding weight? Oh? And the wife said, eh, Why won't he add weight? He's not doing anything. Not doing anything. He's a lazy man. And I was shocked. He said, He's a lazy man. He just stays at home eating. Why won't he add weight? Her husband, in front of people, you say that kind of thing? No. No. You have to be careful how you treat them in public. You don't even correct your spouse before your children. Before your children. You don't do that. You don't do that. That's a wrong way of using words. Praise the Lord. My time is up, so... Which one will I give you? Another one that causes problem. The ninth one is speaking the truth. You're laughing. Speaking the truth. Speaking the truth. The human finishes cooking. He said, honey, how is the food? He said, to tell you the truth, this food is terrible. Ah! Did you say the truth? Yes. But did you cause a problem? 
That's why what the Bible teaches is speaking the truth in love. In love. She finishes making hair. Stays in salon. Three hours for you. He say, you know, honey, you know, is the hair nice? <laughs> he say, now wow. I didn't know when I married a prophetess. Say, so you look like John the Baptist. Is that the truth? Yes, it's the truth sometimes. You know, sometimes when people can make some wonderful hair. I've seen people that make it to look like they went to salon, they took the hair and don't do like this. They say receive. But that's not how to say it. You can say it in a nicer way. Can say it in a nicer way. Am I communicating? A nicer way. You know that the hair um, is nice, but um, you know, it has some issues here and there. But you have made nicer ones. You've made nicer ones. You know, but it's okay. But you've made nicer ones. Than saying the hair is terrible. Is a disaster. Complete disaster. You spoke the truth, but you caused problem. You know, I'll end with this story. You know, what's his name? Or our robots. Or our robots. How he married his wife. He was rushing for a program. Then he rushed into the program. And in the program, he realized, you know, he, he, he realized he didn't comb his hair. And he was sitting beside his sister. And his sister knew that he was a guest minister. You know, and the sister, he turned to his sister and said, how is my hair? Sister said, wow, your hair is wonderful. Your hair is wonderful. And the man, they say, my hair is wonderful. And he didn't have time to go and comb the hair. They were about to call him. So he carries the hair and climbs the pulpit and finishes preaching. And when he got home, he looked at the mirror and saw the hair. But something occurred to him. What kind of sister is this that will tell me that my hair is beautiful? It looks like she can be a pastor's wife. And he was looking for a wife. That's how he traced the sister. They said the relationship and he married her. And that is the Evelyn Roberts that you know. It was a sister I met in the program. And that one would say, Hey! Hey! <laughs> He said to tell you the truth. Don't need that pupito. You will scare people. Am I communicating? Hallelujah. But the last one, which is the worst one. I call it the worst. Because sometimes people make mistakes and say wrong things. But the one that causes the most problem is a bad reply. A bad reply. So people now reply. They reply what was said. They reply it. They reply it. And it's women who should not reply the most. The man said, something is wrong with you. He said, me, something is wrong with me. He said, you looked at me and told me something is wrong with me. You don't have sense. <laughs> I even thought you were a man, but you don't have sense. You don't have sense at all. Do you even hear what pastor thought? You are still talking like this. You don't have sense at all. <laughs> the man will say, you're, you're saying I don't have sense. He say you don't have sense. You don't have sense. If they open this your brain, it's milk that will be running out. You don't have sense. You don't have sense. <laughs> and from there, they start, then the man loses his temper and strikes the woman. And problem has started. No. The Bible said, a soft answer turns away what? Rough. When your husband offends, because he's the man most times, because they have authority, who will do that thing? It's not time to reply. Now that he's angry, don't reply him. Allow it to go. Say something nice and leave it. Maybe somewhere in the night when the anger has calmed down, you find the one and say, honey, that thing you said, though, it actually hurts me. Da, 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 da. And the man will, you know, because his anger has calmed down. He apologizes. He tells you, okay, I won't do it again. I will avoid it. A bad reply. A bad reply. That is what causes the biggest problem. It's not the first thing that was said. It's the reply that causes the biggest problem. Hallelujah. Did you learn something this morning? Lift up your hands. Let's go ahead and thank him. Let's go ahead and thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Let's appreciate Jesus. Appreciate him for the things he has taught you today. So whether you are still single, you are not even in a relationship, these things will help you. Father will give you praise, will give you glory. 
thank you for the things you have shared with us this morning. This morning, while we are waving those hands with our heads bowed, you are here this morning. You've not given your life to Jesus Christ. You've not made him your personal Lord and Savior. Please, you know, just signify by raising your hand. I want to help you to meet Jesus. I want you to. I want to help you to meet Jesus. The rest of us, you can put your hands down. You want to give your life to Christ? Anybody like that? Just lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Jesus will come into your life and he will save you. He will save you. I don't want to end any service without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Anybody, you want to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Okay, I can't see any hand. Just go ahead and thank him one more time. Father, I will thank you. Help us to practice these things in our friendships. Help us to practice them in our marriages. Help us to practice them in our relationships. Help us to mind what we say. Help us to say the right things and to stay away from the wrong things. We we'll honor you. We we'll give you praise. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us appreciate Jesus.